morning. Welcome back once again to Off the Cuff here with the Daily Statesman. Uh, this morning we're going to be here with City Administrator Mark Stidham. Uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about what the city's had going this year and uh, kind of give us a wrap-up. Uh, Mark, tell me a little about what you do. Um, good morning, Corey. Uh, a lot of your municipalities, cities, have um, different terms. There's, of course, some have city managers form a government. Some have the city administrators form a government. Um, Missouri Municipal League, which we're a member of, uh, acknowledges these um, probably over half, uh, way over half, because a lot of the cities and, and communities we're talking about, you know, we're a ballpark of 8,000 people. There's a lot with uh, 1,200, 800 people that have a city administrator's form really? of government. I didn't realize Basically, that. and I've got a list of all of them that's in the state of Missouri. Basically, what happens is uh, most of your communities have a ribbon-cutting mayor. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, uh, uh, and, and basically that's all they do. Your city's Poplar Bluff, I think, uh, using one that's close, I think the mayor gets a dollar a year. Mm -hmm. And basically, it's more of a uh, of a volunteer, but a ribbon cutting. But they are the highest elected official. They do have the ultimate decision. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, you've got to form a form of government of somebody that comes in and does your budget, mm -hmm. uh, and all the departments report to. Uh, we did. We have found, uh, and you'll find this if you you look at some of the smaller municipalities or some of the sp municipalities that don't have this form of government, what will happen is a lot of your um, um, aldermen or mayor will run, and if it's if it switched out every two years, then basically what your city does is they're running in a different direction all the time. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a platform. Uh, if you have a mayor that comes in and says, okay, we're going to put all of our goal on uh, retail sales and we're going to push for our retail market. Mm -hmm. He's in there two years and said, okay, I've got all this I want. The next one you might have somebody that says, okay, we're going to concentrate on speeding and, and uh, I mean, and, and, and it's happened. And you don't do anything long term. And yes, <laughs> and what happens is everything that you fought for two years for retail sales is out the window. Yeah, and because basically you're not saying an alderman or a mayor is running on a pet peeve or a project, but people have a tendency. Okay, what we do in Dexter, much like probably other cities, I don't pattern ourselves after anyone mm -hmm. else. We sort of wrote the plan as we went. We have up and coming projects, from large to small, some million dollar projects and our five and ten year plan and some smaller projects. Mm -hmm. um, these projects are prioritized, okay? This list grows every day that we, but at the end of the, at the budget cycle, uh, as we complete projects, it goes into a completed category. And I have this, I could email to you sometime. Yeah. Or, and you've even seen it, I think you've seen it. It's, it, it shows you the projects that we've done, up and coming projects. Mm -hmm projects that are under design, projects that we're doing, and then as we add new ones to the bottom of that list, the Alderman prioritizes at the um, at the budget cycle. The only, and most of the time we stay in order. There's occasionally that there's an ad item that's added that emergency will come along that you can't foresee. It's gotta be placed in higher yes. priority above yeah. others. Yeah. We had a, uh, the drainage, uh, the, um, Right across on Market Street and one mile there, right across from Busy B in front of Millington Trucking, we had no idea that that was under in bad shape through there. We we noticed noticed some holes coming in the parking lot where you're pulling out in and out. Engineers got to looking at it, and basically it was falling apart. Oh good. So that got jumped ahead. Mm -hmm. I mean, and those projects will and the Alderman. Uh, you know, I just go to them with a recommendation. This is where we're up and going. Yeah. Um, that list is going as we speak. Uh, uh, and and well, that's what kind nothing of, new. What kind of stuff uh, did you guys take care of this year? Well, 
you know, our three, uh, probably the last three years since the uh, the push had got on to vote for a new police station, uh -huh. um, we started putting money back to uh, encumbering money to do a police department expansion. We just finished the five hundred thousand dollar expansion on it. Um, that was much needed. People think, well, why does your police department need that? Uh, and I'll just tell the public, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the police station that was there, there was lucky to be one receptacle in each office. Yeah. Back uh, when that was built in the 70s, probably a calculator or maybe a lamp was all that was needed. Everything's technology now. Everything's computer. People says, well, those officers don't need to be in that office. People don't realize, well, the days, laws, and everything that there is out there, them officers have to usually spend about two hours at the end of the day on on forms and 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 um, and finishing up their day. That's include that's just a normal traffic stop. Mm -hmm. You know, each traffic stop has a racial profile that they're required to do by state law, whether it's male, female, Hispanic, black, white. Mm -hmm. All of that has to be completed. Then. If there's a DWI or anything like that, then there's a whole lot yeah. more paperwork involved. Those have to be done. You think, well, why? They have to be done to the T. Everybody watches TV. They see where they're sitting here watching a, a show where something gets thrown out on the technicality. Uh -huh. An officer did not do something correct, did not do some. Somebody gets off murder. I mean, you know, you see those on TV. Oh, yeah. I'm not talking at that scale. But it's a lot like that. Them things have to be done and they have to be done correct, mm -hmm. or else um, the ticket's not worth the paper it's wrote on. That's right. And uh, anyway, with that said, uh, uh, it was much needed. Those officers have a lot of paperwork they have to do at the end of every day. Um, we have four stations right now, four officers can be doing their paperwork. Keep in mind, some of it you can't wait till the end of the day. If you're processing somebody, we picked up somebody for a, uh, um, a warrant for their arrest. They've not paid a traffic ticket or whatever. Mm -hmm. They have to be processed right then, so you can't wait yeah. till the end of the day. DWIs have to be processed right then. So, you know, there's a lot of things involved. But anyway, that was much needed. Our, our, even though our force has not grown that much, mm -hmm. the force hasn't grown any since I've been involved with the city. Fact of the matter, the city staffing itself is less. We've eliminated two in water. We've eliminated one in administration. We've eliminated, uh, we've eliminated some positions out there. So yeah. we're under, we're lower staffed now than what we were. PD uh, has not increased, but still you mm -hmm. got it. It takes right. more room to do what you got to do. It does, and boy, they needed it. Yes, it was, yes. uh, you know, yes. even the booking room was. And, uh, you know, we've had several things going on. We uh, we got in the depot this year. Mm -hmm. uh, grand opening, I think it was in February. Uh, <clears throat> yes, it's it, a lot of people have been in there. We're probably, realistically, probably had 100, 150 people in there this year. Mm -hmm. um, make, well, more than that if you count the events, but I'm talking about drop-ins. Yeah. It's not quite utilized yet uh, like we would like it, uh, but but we're working on it. I mean, there's uh, uh, an alderman that's working on the uh, Fallen Heroes thing mm -hmm. that you've seen that's going to be in New Madrid here. Not saying that we'll get it, but we're going to start doing things like that. Yeah. Art shows and different things and utilizing the building. But we've got in that this year. Uh, the downtown drainage, um, something boring. When you go to yeah. talking infrastructure, you're going to lose everybody. They're going to change the channels on you, uh -huh. whatever. If you're on TV, they'll get up and uh, and go to something um, a lot more interesting. But people don't realize. I've had people there in the parade say, "When are they going to do something to the downtown streets?" I brought this up at the council meeting. Yeah. Um, our downtown streets are awful. Uh, I did not know till probably four or five years ago the reasoning behind not touching anything. The downtown drainage is in bad shape. 
Mm-hmm. Daryl Orr, our city engineer, has been encumbered, or has backup, not encumbered. He put ballpark a million dollars down for downtown drainage. The drainage systems that we have now have been here ever since the town's been formed. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> we got in here with a, a crew was in here this summer. It cost a little shy of 200000 They cameraed and augered and cleaned out every line that we had. We saw them out in front of the building for a couple yes. of days. Even. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And what they did is I've got a, a DVD that shows that I can look at, and you're talking about boring. If you want to watch a movie sometime, holler, I'll give you a DVD <laughs> and you can look at them underground drainage. But anyway, um, the um, but it shows you where all the bad spots are also. Uh-huh. So we have started, call for locates. We're taking from Vine Street to the tracks, marking out the bad spots. It tells you if there's a collapse in the line uh, um, 84 feet say you're going north 84 feet from the corner Mm -hmm. it tells you right you can measure off that 84 foot dig that bad section up replace it there's a lot of the areas in downtown that we're not going to have to dig up but we're going to line everything they have been given the permission they're coming back at the end of january they're from wisconsin um we've had two or three groups look at it Anyway, they're going to come back in and they will line our downtown drainage. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, um, and then of course they cut out as the drain, the yeah. drop in that's coming in. From How the does side. that work? What do they? It's a they hard do? resin. Uh, it's a hard resin uh, that um, gets hard. There's that's areas where there's hair cracks. Yeah. Now if it's completely busted apart and no. Uh, structure around yeah. it whatsoever it'll have to be dug up, okay. dug up and replaced but uh, you know downtown Stoddard Street Main Street there the main street there Stoddard that was the core of city of Dexter it went south and north a little bit and then it pretty well stopped yeah there is areas and on Vine and uh, Locust that we've got a 21 inch pipe from Vine Street down to, um, say, where the barber areas are, where mm-hmm. the hair, hair yeah. works places are. Then it drops down to 17 and then drops down to 13. And the water is flowing from south to north. If that was reversed, if you was going 13, 17, and 21, that'd be fine. But that was not the case. It's choking down. They were using what they had at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was areas. There's areas in town that two inch I mean, two foot orange bird pipe sections are glued together. That's what they had at the time. And people don't realize, well, what have you got? Why are you having to mess with this? That's where all your downtown water goes. We've had businesses downtown that would get water in them. Mm -hmm. Well, not since we've got them opened up. We've got everything opened up now. They're going to be coming back lining, um, and that phase will be going on. And then, so that this summer we can pave Stoddard then get the streets back up to where they need to be. Yeah. But, you know, we don't want to get in there and cut the streets out and then have to come back and... Yeah, and get the streets out and then come back next year to keep patching holes and, and digging it up. It's just, it's a never-ending ending cycle. Yeah. We've got a lot of things. You know, um, there's a lot of regulations that change as far as wastewater. I noticed an article yesterday where... Amber and UE are having to change their um, smokestack, state mm-hmm. of Missouri, because EPA has changing a lot of your boiler. People with boiler yeah. district, well, they're also changing discharge limits for ammonia that's affecting every city in the, in, in the state of Missouri. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to have to upgrade our, our wastewater system again, which we're not alone. I think every city around us are going to have to going to have to uh, check they've changed the ammonia limit so you're going to see a, we're going to be doing a lot of experimenting there yeah and then everybody will notice coming into uh, um, 25 and 60 I don't know if you notice it on the evening in the afternoon when you go home our new Dexter sign that is just like the one in front of Blackwell Baldwin's uh-huh. out here is going in 
on 60. The columns were poured last week. Um, that sign, <coughs> it's in place as we speak, but there's some cleanup that they're going to have to do. And they've got to Is the X the going the right direction? <laughs> those, signs, those signs were built at the same time. Really? And that, that one has been in storage uh, at Stites Concrete. It's been down there. Steve Brown dug it out. Uh, it took a while for us to get it out. Oh, man. And, uh, um, but that, that sign should be up and uh, finished shortly. Uh, Good deal. We are going to have electric there. It's not going to be landscaped uh, because of the lack of water. We do not yeah. have any way to get water to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but it's going to look up. It'll it's look, good. look good. It's going to it look good. It will. That's great. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you guys did a lot this year. Oh, we, you know, we just touched on the high spots. We are constantly, you know, you see the little uh, ditches in town that have been cleaned out and rocked or areas of town. Those are day to day operational things. Uh, you know, the fire department, we've upgraded. Uh, you know, we've got that new fire truck at the first part of the year mm -hmm. with a grant. Um, uh, we've got another one up and coming. And that's the thing about our the year end here next week, mm -hmm. um, December the 31st of 2011, uh, is the year end for the nation, for the country. Our year doesn't end until June the 30th. Yeah. But it doesn't begin, you know, our year begins July the 1st. So yeah. the year end cycles, it's a little complicated when you go in to say, what are you going to be doing next year and what you're going to be That's doing true. the following year. You know, I've got a lot of things that I'm hoping to have done by summer. Uh, some of them we touched on. Some of them are big projects, which I know I've got. Um, Plaza Heights with insufficient water. Uh -huh. They were annexed into the city limits with a vote of the people, and ever since they came in, there's been inadequate water. We have got the sewers up there, which they are paying yeah. for. Um, engineering, we're doing engineering as we speak to increase the water, run some eight inch lines up there and get some people some water pressure. One thing that I'm experimenting with I've already got it in the groundbreaking and already got one organization going to adopt. I talked to the civic organizations, um, started talking about two years ago about adopting out Highway 60 and these overpasses. Mm -hmm. You see a lot of your cities adopting those out with different civic organizations and they landscape them. Mm -hmm. the, trees, uh, the tree council is taking over the um, um, AD, or, I'm sorry, one mile road overpass. Uh, hopefully this year we'll have some nice decorative shrubs or something out there. Yeah. And with that said, uh, I'm getting quotes. I do not know. I have not ever priced this. Uh, so it's one of those things that we're going to be getting quotes. You'll see us advertising in your paper. Uh, uh, we're going to be taking sale bids on mowing from Highway 25 to AD. Uh, mowing the media and probably one pass or so on the shoulder. Uh, you know, we're not going to go all the way up and dots right away. Yeah. To, you know, we've got a good looking city. Yes. We've got a clean city. We're moving forward. We have been moving forward. Everybody really compliments us on the ag aggressiveness and where we're headed and what our five year plan and our 10 year plan. That will help the image. When you come in right now, and I'm not complaining about MoDOT, they'll mow about once a year whether it needs yeah, it or not. That's the standard, I think. <laughs> yeah. I know up, up 25 through Bloomfield, they yeah. do the same thing. Yeah. About once a year whether it's needed or not. Try that at home. Yeah. And you won't be able to see your front door. No. I'll but, have a ticket, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, the uh, that will change the image. I don't think... I do not think it's going to be real, real expensive. We're going to explore it, that's and true. if it's something that's in our that's in within our means, you know, I'll take those numbers to the board and we'll decide. Uh, but long range, I really think it would. Uh, you know, it helped this past year. We lit up our overpasses. We lit mm -hmm. them up. Ad hospital. It does 25. help. And it does. You know, you've had people say that. Uh, 
they're single parents and they're coming through town and uh, they won't stop. They won't get off of an overpass that's unlit because they're scared. They have trouble or whatever. Uh, we lit up his overpasses and then with the bleed over light from the businesses and the restaurants and, and different things mm -hmm. along there, it really helps. Yeah. Um, that's what, that's one of the things that I'm really looking forward and hoping we can make it work this week. It's, it's, or this year, it's not very costly. Um, with that said, I'm going to be looking for somebody to adopt AD. Uh, probably stay away from 25, but if um, there are civic organizations out there that wants their name out there mm -hmm. and want the community and people traveling 60 to know what kind of, what kind of organization they are, we will also uh, adopt those sections out for litter control. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can do one mile segments. The city will get remote out. We'll pay for the sign that says the next one mile adopted. You've seen them. Yeah. You've seen them throughout the states. Um, but it, it lets a lot of people know, you know these little organizations, Eagles, uh, Lions Club, and all these people, they are constantly doing scholarships and mm -hmm. they're constantly doing things that a lot of people, unless you've got a, a child in school, you don't aren't aware of. Yeah. This thing here not only lets them know what they're doing locally by organizations like that, but they're also making a difference in their community. That's right. And, um, you know, you look at industry, you look at fast food business, you look at retail, anything, you keep your city looking good, um, they will stop, and they will start. That's right. There, and they'll spend money too. They when will. they get off that road, they're going to spend money. That's right. And uh, and that's what everybody's wanting. That's right. That's um, exactly what they need. But we've got to, you know, we'll touch um, base on some other things later on, as um, as we uh, we go throughout the year, and probably yeah. into next year, you'll probably be doing articles on what has transpired in the past. Yeah. Where we're where we're headed and where we're mm -hmm. going, but um, uh, I think if you you look ahead, you know we're constant and and Mayor Weber will tell you uh, we are constantly he he just he just he cannot believe just because once we get something and we want it, we'll get we might have four or five projects going on at one time, mm -hmm. and I'm already unraveling the next one in which direction we want to go. And, but that's what you've got to do. Yeah, that's if right. you sit around and wait till you get finished with the project, you're going to have gaps. Because I hate it. One of the worst things when I come to municipality coming out of private sector is the length of time it takes to do anything. Oh, yeah. And that's, if there's any federal funding or state funding, you know, we got a little bit of money back uh, from the USDA on this mm -hmm. police station. Truthfully, that delayed the project 18 months to two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's just unreal. Um, the, the red You team, know what yeah. they say? <laughs> they say they're job creation. They're creating jobs. Um, but we're not going to go there. That's the politics. Side. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, Mark, I appreciate it. I enjoyed well, it today. Uh, thank you, Corey. I look forward to getting back and coming back, which, you know, we talked quite a bit uh, in the paper where we're constantly never did never tried this before yeah uh, if it works out and you get a lot of hits uh, who knows Jay Leno might call me tonight and want me that's to be right. you know <laughs> the dog made it that's right the <laughs> or dog David made it. was that David Letterman that was Letterman well was you Letterman. know our, our, our drug dog made it to David Letterman it's a shame you know that's maybe right. I could do maybe I can make it somewhere you there know. you go Good Morning America <laughs> Saturday Night Live yeah yeah, yeah. but good talking to you Corey thank we'll you keep you posted. I appreciate it and we, we enjoy, I want to tell you we uh we as a city, uh, the mayor, the board of aldermen, the department heads, and everybody really thank you all for the coverage you do. You know, if we're closing a street, uh, I can email it in here, and, uh, you know, it's sent out immediately, uh, which we do all the different news mm -hmm. organizations. Uh, if it's an emergency situation where we're shutting it down for whatever reason, uh, 
we can get it out there pretty quick. That's right. And you know, we got a bunch of ways we can do it now yeah. too. You know, and, and, and you know, and that comes. I think we are utilizing the. You know, we've got a call out program now. Mm-hmm. That called out this morning. Uh, everybody was called this morning that's on that list that tell them about the warning sirens. Okay, but there are people that are not on that list or people not home. But then there's people that don't get the paper, you know, and that's then right. there's people that don't listen to the radio. We have tried every form of communication, and you cannot get it overcover. Right. You cannot yeah. overcover. I mean, so we double a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, we might hit Daily Statesman, and you might hear it there, and then you might hear it. But the good old thing now with texting, word of mouth, if there is something that you know of, I think you live at Bloomfield, mm-hmm. right? If there's something that, and, and your wife's at Bloomfield and the, and the road's closed. Yeah. She will text you and let you know that information if you don't know it. That's right. Before you ever leave here. Um, that technology, the same thing with road closures we have in town. People think, well, I'm not going to let them know. Surely they've heard. Uh-huh. You know. Uh, well, you they, know, that's the same theory with our text alert system. We yes. Have, is mm-hmm. that, you know, I mean, if we send this out to... X number of thousand people that have signed up for it. Uh, if each one of those forwarded Forward. to one person who Absolutely. needs to know, you've doubled yeah. your coverage, right? I there. did that sitting in your parking lot. Mm-hmm. I got a text uh, between City Hall and here, and no, I didn't stop and answer it right then. <laughs> I waited till I got to your parking lot and uh, and I forwarded it. Mm-hmm. And um, and I'll do that from home. I mean, it's a technology to oh, where yeah. we live. Um, check my emails from home. Um, that's just the world we live in. It but is. anyway, we really thank you all for the coverage you give us. And, and the cities, I know, uh, can't be thankful enough. That's stuff that you guys do, you know, and I tell I tell Walt and Channel 21, uh, I tell KDX the same thing. You know, they they just do it. If we say we've got a road closing, there's no... Mm-hmm. There's no fee involved. They'll say, that's news. We need that's to let right. the That's right. That's news. The people need and, to know. But, you know, <laughs> you get somebody up uh, on their way to school. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've got one mile shut down. Mm-hmm. Uh, we try to wait till after school starts up. But, yeah. you know, you, you got these people on their way to work or on their way to school, and you've got their road shut down. And they got the curlers in their hair and a cup of coffee, and they're putting their eyes, mascara yep. on, and they're trying to curve around you and, I mean, it's it's an inconvenience. If it's a if it's not emergency, we let them know ahead of time, and, and yeah. you guys do. Oh yeah. You know, we know if it's pre-planned what we're going to be doing, and yeah. you guys cover it well for us. Well, I appreciate it, Mark. All right. Thank you. I wish thank you, you guys Corey. a happy New Year. Like thank everyone you. for watching. And we'll see you back here next year.